So, hi everyone. Um, welcome to yet another live session by my captain, organized in collaboration with QFAS. And thank you so much to the QFAS team for arranging and coordinating with these amazing mentors. Well, now is the time that we welcome the speaker of the evening, Kushal Lalwani. Hi, Kushal. Um, okay, so Kushal will be right back with us. There he is. Um, I think there are some camera issues. Uh, Kushal, can you listen to me? Okay, can you guys hear me? I'm finally back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we can hear you. Hi, Kushal, how are you? I'm good, I'm very good. So, as you know, it's 7.30 and this is when the entire country is using the internet. So, there are going to be net issues. As a result, I have kept my webcam off. I hope that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's completely fine. Lovely. Great. Okay, so, so uh, for those who don't know, Kushal is a copywriter with Leo Burnett and he has done his PGBM in advertising and marketing from Xavier Institute of Communications. And today is going to deliver a session for all of us on copywriting 101, thinking out of the box. But before we begin, a gentle reminder for all of you, instead of chat box, why don't you use a Q&A box for the questions? And if there are any technical queries or comments, you can just drop them in the chat box, okay? Well, now that we've put this aside, let's begin, Kushal, over to you. Lovely. Okay, great. So I, I'm guessing that a lot of you are from different backgrounds, um, from whatever I've known you guys are into engineering, some of you are business students, it's a varied bunch basically. And it's on that basis, I'm going to assume that, you know, advertising or copywriting is not something that, that you all are probably familiar with, right? And you might be thinking that, you know, what is it that I do? Okay, so yes. It's advertising. I make ads, but you know, there's a lot more to advertising that you can take out and apply in your day to day life, mainly ideation. That is my key job, right? I am an idea, idea creator. There was a time, if you look at this ad, there was a time when all use all the ads were either radio spots, right? Or they were print ads or they were TV commercials. I mean, a lot of you probably remember the old Ambul ads, right? Uh, the, the old Bajaj ads. And of late, you know, these ads have come back on the TV in a big way, you know, in this entire lockdown era where there's so much uncertainty. Suddenly that, you know, that whiff of nostalgia is extremely reassuring. Um, so let me just start, you know, so like, like, you know, I'm, you guys know I'm probably a copywriter. Uh, I work with Leo Burnett. It's an ad agency and I work out of Bombay, Mumbai. And so primarily, you know, we've all got specializations. I love automobiles. I've always loved automobiles. And I've been very lucky that I've gotten to work on automobile brands, you know. from I started off with Tata Motors and then I got to work on Jeep. And now I work on Bajaj, which is motorcycles. And along the way, I've worked on a lot of other things. I've worked on Amu, SBI, Z, Tide. So, you know, there's a lot of categories that I've ended up covering. And all I can share with you is basically my, my idea of ideation. Think of this as, as an Uber ride, okay? You and I, all of y'all and me, we are in an Uber ride, which is not possible in today's day and age. And imagine for an hour that you've met me and, you know, we're just talking, right? We're stuck in traffic. And you ask me, oh, you're a copywriter. What is it that you do? And this one, I'm going to try and explain to you what is it that I do and how if you ever want to do it, you could probably get better at it, right? So first, a brief background, okay? What, what exactly does advertising do? How does it work? As you know, there are brands all around you, right? You guys use OnePlus phones, you use Apple iPhones, you have TVs, you have certain products of bread that you eat, certain kinds of rice that, you know, your parents only buy, you know, they will not buy any other brand. They trust certain brands, right? So that's, that's the zone, that's the area which I deal with. And brands have specific 
things that they want to talk about right i mean it can be different things for example when i when apple wants to launch an iphone then they approach an advertising agency to create communication right they come to you and they tell you that you know hey we're launching a new product how do you think is the best way to go about it and then it's our job as problem solvers as ideators to come up with the best possible output or the best best possible solution for it okay i'm going to give you a small example imagine i mean this is a huge problem right that people or rather motorists in india we end up breaking traffic lights all the time now if you go to an engineer and you ask him for a solution he will give you a certain idea right if you were to go to a biologist he would give you a different idea you go to a psychologist he's going to give you a different idea right so there are a lot of different ideas that are floating around right it's not it's not probably true to say that if you're an advertising there's only brands nowadays advertising has it's like you know gone far beyond creating ads it's we sort of market ourselves as a solution provider okay i'm going to give you a very simple example of how this works okay now imagine you're a brand and you want to launch a new product so you're like okay how do i create communication for it and as we are an agency right an ad agency and we come to you and we tell you that you tell us we are the experts this is our bread and butter and we'll figure out exactly how you want to say it right because everyone has a different audience uh apple talks to a certain audience a very niche audience one plus talks to a certain affluent upper middle class sort of an audience right so depending on that and research and you know we sort of that kind of makes us communication specialists and <laughs> here's here's one very common problem every brand has a very tight deadline for example we are in the month of july and most ad agencies around the country are already working on their diwali campaigns for different brands right so that's how far behind we need to think you know it's four months ahead and trust me it comes down it always comes down to one night before the launch all right so here's how it works the agency takes a deadline they take a brief right they figure out what what it is that this brand wants to say and then they come to me so i'm the i'm the creative guy and it's my job to basically spend nights thinking of a great solution for whatever it is that they want to say three things okay i'm going to talk about three main things in this entire webinar ideas music and the formats right there are different ad formats and here's here's a great thing about the last part right you all everyone on this webinar knows the different formats you just haven't you know got in used to categorizing them as formats per se okay so what is rule number 1 rule number 1 and this is going to be rule number 1 all through your career okay in advertising or whether you know whether you become an engineer or or whether you enter the marketing team of a company one day there's always going to be one one key rule which is that there are no old roads to this it's a saying right there are no old roads to new directions you will always have to think of a fresh idea because that is the only way you're going to get ahead right the guy above you in a company would have obviously thought of 10 different things but if you want to get ahead you will always have to think of something new right i mean it's darwinian rules so i thought i'd just start by showing you an ad okay and you tell me guys just tell me if you know it doesn't play or something but i wanted to show you the what happens if you don't think of a fresh ad as you know when covid started right this entire covid thing happened brands came out you know talking about you know we are all in this together we are here for you i mean you you obviously you must have seen something and after a while you must have noticed that they were all extremely repetitive like they were very similar so i'm going to play this fun montage okay that i found on youtube that poked fun of this exact same thing <laughs> when we 
first opened our doors. Since 1926. Since 1978. For 60 years. For 75 years. For over 80 years. In 90 years. Over 100 years. Nationwide has been on your side. Restaurants have always been there for you. Nissan has been with you through thick and thin. We will do what we've always done. Take care of people. We're people. 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 Family. 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 Families. 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 Even now. Especially now. Especially now. Right now. Now more than ever. More than ever. Today. More than ever. Today. More than ever. In times like this. At times like these. During these difficult times. In these troubled times. Challenging times. Trying times. In these times of uncertainty. During this time of great uncertainty. During these uncertain times. During these uncertain times. In uncertain times. In uncertain times. Uncertain times. Unprecedented times. Unprecedented times. Unprecedented times. This unprecedented moment in our history. It's time of social distancing. While things have slowed down. As we turn more inside. While the doors may be closed. While the distance between us has gotten bigger. The more we stay apart. We still find ways to stay close. Even when we're apart. Even if we can't stand closer than six feet. We can all stay connected to work, school, and most importantly, to each other. There's still ways to touch each other. All without leaving the comfort and safety of your home. Without leaving the safety of your home. From home. Your home. Your home. Your home. 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 That's the key. Buick and GMC are here to help. Con Edison is here to help. Here to help. Our teams are here. We are here. We're here. We're here. Here for you. Here for you. We're here for you. We're here for you. We are here for you. We're here for you. We are here for you. We'll be here for you. Runnings is here for you. We're still here for you. We're with you. We're part of your community. So you can trust us. You can count on us. And we'll get through this. Together. 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 So you see every single ad that everyone thought of was the same. There was no sense of distinction. And honestly, if you think about it, right, advertising is superficial, but how, how exactly is your phone brand supposed to be there for you? I mean, if it breaks your screw, right? So that's why, you know, it's always important if someone says something, the moment someone says something new, and if you try saying the same thing, you're going to get lost in the crowd which is why every single day it is your job to think of a fresh idea, right? And remember, everything has already been done. I mean, advertising has been around for like past century or so, right? So anything that you can think of has been done, which is why we always Google work, right? To see, you know, if this is something is done, then you have to think of something fresher, 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 fresher. And that's how you keep pushing the bucket. Okay. Um, so I think I'm going to, so the way this is, this webinar is going to work is I'm going to show you some work, okay, different pieces of ads, not dissimilar to what you've just seen. And we're going to discuss, you know, how someone has pushed the envelope to create something new. So Volvo trucks interestingly approached the agency and, you know, so the, you know, trucks have evolved a lot. I mean, in India, trucks are still, you know, what it is, but Volvo companies like Volvo, you know, I've really pushed the envelope. I mean, the trucks are really fancy. They come with a slew of modern technologies. But when you create a truck ad, there are certain category codes you must follow. You must have noticed this, right? When you see a car ad, when you see an SUV ad, it is going to be all about, you know, power and taking on the unknown. And similarly, you know, a supermarket ad is always going to be about families. It's going to be about moms. It's going to be, a, it's going to be very warm. Right? So these are certain category codes that one has to follow and no client will ever want to move away from it. And yet, your ad has to be extremely fresh. So I love this example, okay, because it shows how far advertising has come along from, you know, just creating an ad that you see on your TV or an ad that you read in the newspapers or an ad that you hear on the radio. 
to this okay so this is what you would expect that to be right much is more it's a truck right it's a truck loaded with features so it's going to be about you know taking on anything and doing everything but uh, watch this i'm going to walk up then i stop there and i drive it left and right back and forwards that was fun wasn't it i mean it did everything that it was supposed to do right uh, right okay so that ad had a little child driving a truck that was hilarious it was so much fun to watch right now imagine if they if that child did not exist right if there was no uh, uh, there was no track there was no child there was none of that it was just a typical ad that you know showed the truck going through something 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 and there are a bunch of you know tech features that come on your screen and they say whatever they said in the end you know the volvo so and so truck is the toughest truck we ever built and now with anti roll technology versus this this is fun to watch right for an ad it is fun to watch it's an ad okay let's not forget this is an ad but it's very different from what a normal ad would look like right so that's how far ads have come along and it ticks every single box you saw sophie the child and you saw a lot of the truck right it has all the category codes right the truck the truck was strong it rolled over and it came back up again it showed the usb uh, it went through a building right so it covered everything and it used a child to basically hammer home the message that this truck is so simple to drive i loved it you know i really loved it it's one of my favorite pieces of work okay so now let's explore something a little more complicated okay um, so imagine like okay you you can i hope you can see my screen yeah so imagine you're a generic supermarket okay let's call you call you future mart right and your usp is that you have a lot of products think of geo mart think of big bazaar think of spencers okay right they have loads of products and very often they you know they keep need to put it they need to put out communication that says i have a lot of products so what is the first to imagine all of your advertisers right you all have to think of ideas so what is what, what are some of the ideas that you know kind of come to your head i wrote down a few myself right and i and i tell me what you think right so these are like these were my first thoughts right so who doesn't love more we all love a lot more right so if you love more you love future mart here's another one 
uh, it sort of flips the more thing, right? Why settle for less? when you could have everything come shop at future mart right? these are some examples you could you could play on someone's emotions and say you know you never settle when it comes for your family and we never settle when it comes to providing the best products for your family hence we are a perfect match or you could just be you know all about the fact that you know other guys don't have as many products as we have so that's that's the most common way and i think at some point if you watch a lot of tv you would have seen some variation or some version of this ad you know some big bazaar ad which says you know hey the big bazaar sale is here get 20% discounts on over 10000 products and varun dhawan jumps out of the screen okay so that that's that's what you probably used to see and i picked out two ads okay we're going to watch two very different ads that in the end say the same thing that we have a lot of products but in a way that you've never seen before right they're very fresh very fresh ideas bench box bench box bench box bench box 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 bench box box bench box bench box 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 Play party, play carpet, dormant, spoon for spotlight, light, 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 light. Cough machine. Mop. Lamp. Cup. Mop. Cup. Mop. Lamp. Cup. Bottle, 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 bottle. Bed, 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 bed. Face, 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 face. Oh. Can't do pillow, pillow, pants. Yeah, so that that was the first one. Okay, we'll I'll talk about it after I show you both of these. Very diametrically opposite, but yeah. Um, this girl with no front teeth. Is she on two fifty four and she's cooking? Maybe <gasps> it is. <laughs> I want her brain. The more impressive that it took you only one week to memorize. I think you know the cat look better than I do. <laughs> you should take my job. <laughs> Hi, I'm Yenja. I'm the IKEA Human Catalog. Last week, I memorized the 2018 catalog, all 328 pages of it. Do you want to do this in Swedish or? Right, let's do it in English. Okay, okay. okay. You have notes. Mm -hmm. I don't have notes. Yeah, my memory is not so good. Okay. So we have a couple of things coming soon. On page 164, 165, and hopefully in an IKEA store close to you. They're all designed by Hay. a bureau in Denmark so it's like a collaboration with IKEA and hey everywhere i go now my first reaction is is it IKEA is it not IKEA should it be IKEA this is like the front cover of the magazine everywhere i go now it reminds me of the IKEA catalog and because i've looked at the room sets so much i also feel like i've become a better interior decorator this painting it's on page 15 15 yeah I'm Yenja. This is also on page uh, 138. Let me check. Yes. Oh my. What? I didn't know that. That really struck me that this year they were actually trying to be really creative and really show people how IKEA furniture can be crazy and quirky and unique. When I was a kid, I was just like, "This is nice. This is affordable." And now I think I have a deeper understanding and an even deeper respect because IKEA means something deeper, and I feel like I'm a part of IKEA history. I feel very honored. Okay, so two very different ads that both essentially have the same message that we have plenty, right? But look how different they were. The first one sort of picked on a contemporary trend, you know, at that point of time. You know, India had the whole gully boy phenomenon going on, and everyone was majorly into rap. Etna created something similar, right, in the European markets when they came up with this. And um, wow, this is just so entertaining. They use the names of all these different products to create a rap, right? And it's it's more for the unique value that you keep watching this. And the second one, I love the second one, right? 
because there's this girl and it essentially turns it into a challenge right where you could ask her for anything right you ask her you show her a pen and you're like and she'll tell you see yeah, some this one so page of the catalog but what she's actually doing is telling you that you know what this catalog there, there's so many things in this catalog that's one that's another way of saying the same thing right so that's essentially what i'm talking about um oh this is a fun thing okay are you guys tired what is it do you want to throw some questions at me do you have anything to say are you confused otherwise i'm just going to feel really like creeped out you know so i'm the only one talking uh or do you want to watch this and then maybe move to questions uh yeah kushal let's let's finish the presentation and then we'll move to questions all right super so i'm going to show you this ad um you know moving back to what i just said about shit okay there we go okay so i said ideas are hiding in plain sight okay uh, why did i write this particular piece of messaging over here it's probably because you know if you ever become a copywriter you're going to think to yourself uh, shit man everything's been done and you know like some ads are really creative how am i ever going to measure up to it uh, please don't ever forget that there is always a fresh idea out then sometimes you know it's right in front of you it's something so obvious when you think about it it's so obvious and you're like wow you know i hope no one else has ever done this and for me this particular ad it's a diesel ad okay diesel is a fashion brand and it's a diesel ad and it's one of those ads that you watch and as a writer you think um i wish i thought of that any items acquired can be returned with all tags still attached and in their original packaging all products offered bear an identification label i must be tried on without removing the tag products must be in the same condition they were received in the clothes does not show signs of use wear wash or damage in any way yeah right anyway all items have to be returned with the labels in order to be accepted so in case of buying wearing and returning clothes two things this ad so did two things it's a very so broad i mean the the trend is picking up in india but mostly you know abroad people they wear clothes and then they return them you know and and you get refunded for it obviously and it's it's a very popular thing you walk into a high end store right and imagine you have a party to go to on friday so when is you walk into a high end store uh, you pick out something you like you wear it and then you know the next week you just return it and so diesel new diesel basically caters to millennials they know this is what millennials do right so they kind of picked up on this behavior and they turned the you know that little piece of cloth that you have inside your shirts right uh, return use manufacturing use do not iron without a wet cloth you know so on and so forth it basically used the terms and conditions as a voice over to to make this ad so that's what i really liked about it you know it's something very fresh it's not a hey you've got a new summer collection and you know why don't you try it out no it spoke to you in a way that you would relate to it you know the brand tone was bang on you know you're like wow you know diesel is so cool it is so irreverent that's exactly why i <laughs> okay so how i am going to now show you something a little more personal okay it's what i do so my job is obviously not as glamorous as these ads that you've seen it's a lot more taxing for example bajaj is one of my clients and i'll tell this is like a peek into you know how we actually operate on a day to day basis so bajaj came to us telling us that there was a new bike that they had to launch the ct 110 and it is extremely robust you know because it's primarily aimed at the rural market okay the tier 2 towns tier 3 towns small villages where people expect their vehicles to last at least 6 or 7 years you know that i mean the roads are almost non existent over there kachcha kachcha rasta hota hai right uh, so as a result the bike needs to be very solid and the so which is okay you know that's not a problem but the catch is that bajaj said um 
the bike has to be on the screen all the time you know there there can't be too much of a story and that really stumped us because we were like how do you tell a story without a story and then we were like we don't know, figure it out okay so after many rounds of ideating ideating ideas getting bombed and they kept they, had, they only had one one piece of feedback which is that there's too much story you know it's taking away from the bike it's taking away from the bike people are going to remember your story but they will not remember the bike and finally we hit upon this one idea that that was very relatable okay it barely needed any time to be set up and you would end up remembering the bike because it made the story possible the bike was at the center of the story um, let's watch suraj pur ho ja taiyar akaram akaram tikram ja suraj pur You know, really simple premise. We've all seen a magic show, right? Where the magician makes something disappear and eventually it comes back. But you know, we took like a creative leap and we thought, you know, what if he makes the bike disappear and the bike ends up in a very random place? And this, and hence, you know, and because the bike is so robust, it's the only way that guy can basically come back to the magician to do it every single time. So you know, and I think that. the ad sort of you know it fitted everything that the client wanted right if you remember um from the time the magician says akram bakram to the bike disappearing it's only 10 seconds and the entire thing is only bike shots so in a way copywriting or other ideation it's very scientific because there are a lot of constraints in place okay and you need to work within those constraints and yet create something that that works wonderfully well um and i always say that you know fresh ideas like a through ball like in football terms you know what a through ball is right it cuts through maybe two lines of defense and it sends a striker on the on his way to the goal so you know that's what a fresh idea will do it will do two things uh one if any everything that has already been done it will push it to the side because it's so fresh and number two it fits it fits the brief right because if you have a great idea but if it's not what the client wants your idea doesn't work that's it's as simple as that okay second part right part 2 so that was part 1 right where where basically spoke about why fresh ideas are our only currency in advertising if you don't have a fresh idea it doesn't work now i want to talk a little more about music because what does music do right music is what makes your ad memorable if your visuals are not memorable music you see with your eyes and you hear with your ears right and that's why the ads that you know you probably love that you've seen as a child are ads with great jingles they've got great tunes and most people can you know hum the tunes and that's the level at which we are at everyone remembers hamara bajaj right everyone remembers amul doot peeta hai india so on and so forth but unfortunately in my profession is one of the last things we think about we think of an ad right we think of a script we shoot it and then after we shoot it we think acha isme music kya dalna hai so you know like is i think it's a big mistake and music is is probably like the second biggest thing after your story that you should think about and why i thought of of i was wondering you know how do i basically show show this to you guys and i remember there's this director i know who he created an ad that had two different kinds of music so what i want to do is i'm going to play the ad ad for you it's the same ad but with different kinds of music and you're going to realize how the music just changes what you think of the ad okay da 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 okay here we go go back go back go back yes how to see Go back. 
splendidly engineered, superbly smooth. Okay, so this is one. Okay, now here's the here's the here's the other one. so that's the beauty of music you know you you saw you all of you saw what i saw right uh, it's brilliant you know because music will set the tone you know and it's it, and this music was very cobra cobra beer it's very irreverent it's a uh, it's very witty you know it's it's got all of those it's got that's the tone of the brand and if you ask me the second i obviously like the second one much better than the first but uh this is not for the indian market okay this is for the uk market uh so of course the director had different ideas and the client cobra had different ideas so they ran with the first one but see that's the power of music sometimes you don't need to say anything you don't need a voice over you just need a great piece of music for your film to run okay okay so we're doing the question i'm guessing at the end so i'm just going to move on um okay so the last piece of this presentation how much time do we have i think we have about 20 okay good so it's basically about formats right there are different ad formats that we are going to talk about and since we are running short on time i'm going to show you one of each i hope that's okay okay so there are only five of course there are many more formats in which we create ads so like i told you your ad has to be fresh but you can also use a structure to you know to think of a fresh idea within that okay so the first one is called the payoff which is basically there is a story and then it delivers like a punchline in the end you know all great crime thriller movies sort of use this premise and uh, there's this lovely ad that sort of does the same job so you know that was hilarious so the, the full premise is that you know so he's lost his wallet and at the same time the replacement is also running with him to give it back right pick replacement but you don't know what is happening you you know it keeps you engaged because you want to know like why one man is running after the other fair enough but there's a third man running after them so why 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 and in the end there is you know that that re reveal essentially okay i'm just i'm going to skip these two because they're great ads but i don't think we are little like short on time um the other format is called the brand manifesto where you basically very eloquently talk about what your brand stands for okay and there's this beautiful suv commercial that i'm going to show you it's not like a typical suv commercial okay i mean it doesn't have those power shots there is no car going through a river you know there is no talk of matches more it's it's very beautiful it's very simple and it's very well written okay it's very simple to understand watch Thank you. The others don't. 
This ad essentially talks about this one message, you know, a Spider-Man like message that, you know, with great power comes great responsibility, right? And most SUVs, they only talk about great power, right? Every SUV ad, SUV ad, every truck ad will always say that, you know, we have great power, great power. But then Skoda turned it around and they said with great power must also come great responsibility. Power should be beautiful, right? And in this case, beautiful means the great designs of the car, you know, the way it drives, as you know, so on and so forth. And the way they connected, they emotionally connect with you, right? So that beautiful manifesto that basically talks about, you know, what power should be. And then it leaves you with that line and then that power, whatever your power, it should be beautiful. Okay, now I'm going to show you one ad. This is fun. Okay, this is fun. I'm going to show you an ad that said, screw that format. You know, this is what I'm going to do. How many car ads have you seen with grandiose speeches over the years? Big declarations, making claims to some overarching human truth. Companies call these commercials manifestos. There's your manifesto. Right, so essentially Jeep released this ad during the Super Bowl. Uh, which is sort of the advertising mecca for all of us. I mean, in India, it's the IPL, right? Uh, in the United States, it's Super Bowl. So it basically broke that entire format, right? Again, a very fresh idea where it said that, okay, this is what most car ads look like where they talk about a greater brand purpose. They spoke about how strong the product was, right? You saw that Jeep it just like jumped here and then tuck, 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 and it went away, right? So that was called breaking the format. And I'm going to show you this lovely ad. It features Usain Bolt about how to use a celebrity. A lot of ads have celebrities. You remember Amitabh from ICICI, uh, Irfan Khan, and Vodafone, you know, so on and so forth. But uh, this, is, I'm, this is just a placeholder to show you, you know, if you had to exemplify a celebrity, right? So how we normally use celebrities is that we say, this celebrity stands for X, Y, and Z. Our brand also stands for X, Y, and Z, you know? So you try to relate the celebrity's features to what your brand stands for. Uh, this ad that I'm going to show you is for Virgin Mobile. Uh, what do mobile phone ads usually talk about, right? They talk about great network, fast network, uh, reliable network. So I'm just going to show you how they use Usain Bolt's attributes to drop on their brand purpose. Usain Bolt broke the 100 meter world record in 9.58 seconds. Do you know what 9.58 seconds feels like? It feels like this. Like your whole life passing under your feet. <laughs> like the entire nation is running it with you. Like the overwhelming rush of hurt was worth it. Feels like that healthy Jamaican home cooking. Okay. Okay. 
felt like the boy grew up, but never lost his killer instinct. It feels deep, like pure joy. Feels like being a real life superhero. Like everything in your whole life is suddenly making sense. This is what it feels like to be the fastest. So speed, right? Um, all mobile phone companies would like to talk about speed, about understanding the value of time. You know how frustrating it is, right? When you call someone and then, you know, for four seconds, you know, there's a tick, 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 and then your call connects. It feels like an eternity, okay? So, hence, I think this was a great use of a celebrity attribute, right? You know, Usain Bolt's fast. And if you want to attribute that to a brand, then a mobile phone brand would work really well. So, and instead of saying that, you know, hey, you know what, Usain is very fast and so are we, they spoke about what it meant to be, they spoke about, you know, those 9.58 seconds, what does it feel like, right? About, you know, what does, what does it feel like to be fast? What does it feel like to be in the moment in those 9.58 seconds? So very well done, Ad, very well. Okay, and this last, okay, so this is the last part of this nice little webinar we've been having. It's called Acts, Not Ads, where we basically, it's a new sort of philosophy where we basically say that, you know, when, when, when a, when a brand or a product, when they want to say something, don't think of a film, don't think of a TVC, don't think of a commercial, okay? Think of what you can do, something something a little more tangible. Okay, so like the Sophie, remember that girl we saw in the beginning, the very first ad, the girl driving the truck? So that's called an act, where it's not, a, it's not an ad film, but it does everything an ad film would do. Uh, similarly with the human catalog, the IKEA human catalog, the girl who memorizes the entire thing. That's an act. It's not an ad. So I would like to show you an act that I created that it did fairly well. We won a few Khan, Khan Awards uh, that particular year that it released. And it was for the Bajaj B. And please take note of the other ones. So I've also mentioned a few other acts. I'll just quickly talk about them before showing you the Bajaj B. Paving for Pizza was essentially an initiative by Domino's Pizza. Okay. Uh, where they offered, so if basically the way it works is you download the app, uh, you tell them that, you know what, there is a pothole on the road, okay, and they will come and they will fill up that pothole. Why? Because they say that potholes are bad roads, increase the amount of time it takes for them to deliver your pizza to you, which is, in a way, if you think about it, is very true, right? So it's, a, it's, it's an outrageous idea. It's an outrageous idea. Instead of just saying that, you know, we do our best to, you know, deliver pizza on time to you. You know, in India, they did 20, 20 minutes or less, right? 30 minutes or less. Instead, they said that the roads are bad. We will fix the roads so we can get your pizza to you in time. So similarly, if you want, just take a screenshot and, you know, check out these other ones. They're equally as cool. They're very relevant. Uh, especially the second last, the last three have been named... Uh, you know, the most effective and creative acts of the past decade. Okay, so moving back to the first one, Bajaj B, I'll show you the case study for it, okay? And I'd like to tell you that this is not something that a client wanted. Um, like all of y'all, I read about this in the newspaper, right? That uh, the INS Vikrant, India's famous warship was coming down. And that's kind of where the idea came from. Let's watch the case study for it. Former flagship of the Indian Navy, our first aircraft carrier, the legendary INS Vikrant, was hauled to a breaking yard where she's being ripped apart and reduced to scrap. Do we as a nation pay lip service to the memory of our war vets? Vikrant earned its real fame in 1971. In the war. Vikrant played a very crucial role in India's victory against Pakistan, which led to the birth of a new nation called Bangladesh. Vikrant, in one word, mother. Floating in a field, floating city, powerful weapon. Pride of our nation. She was a national hero. My first 
first reaction on the grants being scrapped was of dismay. I was very sad. Very sad. Protests in front of Lion Gate against the Navy to move the vessel to a ship breaking yard. To send a ship to the scrapyard is almost like condemning a human being to execution. She could have afforded to have maintained her. what the scrap metal refined it and created the Vikram will actually come back now India can ride with pride there can be a better tribute I've never seen people inquiring about a product without seeing it I can own a piece of history now That was the INS Vikram, right? Um, it was a very cool idea. The clients loved it. Uh, they went ahead, and you know, it's it, because they were looking to create a brand for the 150cc category. They had Pulsar, right? The Bajaj Pulsar, but they also wanted a more commuter-friendly bike, uh, which was not the Discover, which was not the Pulsar, but you know, something a little more resolute. And hence the idea of using the metal. See, at the end of the day, you don't know how much metal of the INS Vikram they're actually putting into the motorcycle. But the idea of owning such an iconic piece of, you know, Indian naval history was very appealing. It was a very compelling consumer proposition. Um, so, yeah, I think that kind of concludes today's session. Uh, please don't forget. Uh, so I kind of changed it. You know, it's not copywriting per se. I hope you've kind of realized that. But it's more about ideation, right? And Ideas are all around you. Ideas are everywhere, right? Whether it's a magician show, whether it's, you know, a, a warship being dismantled in a scrapyard, you know, the ideas can come from anywhere. Like you saw, it can come from the tag of your underwear, right? And the, the only way to do it is to keep thinking, you know, ideas are not going to come within the first five minutes. In fact, everything you think of, your first 10 thoughts are probably shit. Okay, and always say no to the first five things you think of. And it's only after that that your mind actually, you know, sort of puts itself to work and comes up with something newer, newer, newer. If you keep trying at it, you will find that through ball. And don't get stumped by the problem, okay? Because it is also, because if your problem is that, oh my God, my client wants me to show the product all the time, or yeah, no one wants to see a product, don't think of it as something that's stopping you. See how you can make it your biggest asset. The, both the catalog ads that we saw, right? They turned the product, the biggest stumbling block into the biggest asset. And yes, music, <laughs> please, you know, like don't let it be the last thing that you think of. All right, that was that. Questions? Uh, great, great question. Uh, so thank you so much for the amazing presentation. Let's move on to a couple of questions that our mentees have. Um, Let's start with one question that I'm sure everyone is struggling with. And the question is, what do you do for brainstorming? Oh, wow. Okay. What do I do for brainstorming? I do. So the very first thing that I do, um, I watch what everyone else has already done. Okay. It helps you find a great ad and it helps if that's one and it helps you send, set a benchmark. Okay, when you watch, when you think, when you get a brief and you see that someone in some part of the world has created an amazing piece of work, that is your benchmark. Okay, in your head, you're like, whatever I do, it has to be equal or better than that. You know, anything less yeah. than that will not work. So when you keep, when you set those limits for yourself, it's always easier to work. Number two is try finding something that people can relate to. That's very important because when you watch an ad, you know, you want, you're actually watching your serial or you're watching your favorite sports match. Okay. And in the middle, there is an annoying ad. Okay. So like you really don't want to watch it. No one wants to watch ads. And probably this is the most number of ads that any of us have watched in one go in our lives. Okay. <laughs> if you watch like some 10 ads. So it has to be very fresh. So it has to be very relatable. So those are just few of the things that you'd look for. Okay. Uh, thank you for the answer. Kishar, moving on to the next question. This is a very interesting question actually. Um, so we have a nurse among us and she is asking how she can advertise her career. 
Okay, that's that's a very cool question. Yeah. Okay, social media marketing is very cool, right? So, so the beauty of social media, okay, is that now you don't. Everyone is a brand, okay. You are a brand. Your page, your social media page stands for something. Your handle stands for something, and you first the first thing you need to identify is who do you want to talk to, okay? If you want to start a blog. Okay, after completing your course, who do you want to talk to? Do you want to talk to fellow students? Do you want to talk to your friends? Okay, figure out who you're talking to, and that will help you sort of create the the kind of content that you want to put out. Okay, um, for example, look look and always look at competition work, right? Look what ed- other educational uh, influencers talk about, right? Um, what do you want to talk about after you've completed your course on my captain, right? So if you want to talk about uh, upskilling, right? That's that's a big trend these days. So maybe you could start with that. Okay, every day you could suggest you know small ideas on how people can upskill, right? Um, if you can show you know how it benefits you, because you could always say you know look after ten days I know so much more than I knew ten days of that. So there are different ways to do it. Okay, and there are a few tips. So maybe you, I don't know my captain. Maybe there are a few uh, <laughs> courses on advertising that you could probably yeah. look at. Great, great. Thank you. Um, we have another question. I love the next question. I love the next question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is so true, right? In times in COVID, where brands need to get advertising is always the first to suffer. But um, so that's happened for like very normal things, like product launches have been delayed. But one thing that all brands have realized is that you cannot go silent. Okay, you can't go dark. Mm-hmm. You you have to have a constant presence, whether it's online or off. Right. Right. There are some brands, as you right. know, like you know, like a Flipkart and Amazon. Those are only present online, right? So that is essentially what, like other shops, you know, physical shops have been forced to close down because they can't pay rent. Uh, brands that only sell online cannot afford to do that because being online in a way is their rent. Okay, so they need to keep maintaining a presence, and they understand that things like COVID. Yes, it's extremely debilitating, but it will go away at some point, right? And you and you can't just come back. The costs. Of going dark and coming back out, you know, like are not worth it as compared to you know, like constantly talking to your audience right. all the time. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, I think that answered your question, Rhythm. Moving on to the next question, um, is there is it compulsory to have a degree in advertising or journalism to be a copywriter? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Do not. There is no need for you to do that. In fact, I did a course in journalism. and you know and then i did that whole xic thing but you know what after joining an agency i realized that you don't need to do a course you know because at the end of the day it's about the power of your ideas and no one can teach you how to ideate okay it's something you learn on the job and the best way to do a, do that is to go and intern intern for two months intern for three months at an ad agency because you know you won't just be like a normal intern you're not going to go and fetch coffee for people you're not going to sit around when no one gives you work there is so much work to do at an agency right so you'll be you'll either love it or you'll hate it and you'll want to do something else yeah okay okay so uh, we have a next question and divya is asking how does an agency approach a brand in times like these you know uh, where in everyone these days is using social media to promote their products so how do you approach brands i'll give you an example of you know something that we did for one of our brands um so as you know um you know a lot of people cannot go to the hospital right now i mean i mean if you don't have covid if you have something else going to a hospital is tough because you're scared of catching a disease and hospitals are trying to reserve beds only and only for covid patients okay so because i work on bajaj we were thinking you know like what what can we do you know to help people in this pandemic and you rightly said you know there's no point being superficial and saying we are all in that together if you're not going to do something and we realized that bajaj has recently introduced a vehicle called the cute it's a it's a four wheeler it's a four wheel sort of a small van thing and we actually came up with the idea of fixing kidney dialysis machines on it so that you know a lot of people who do need to go to hospitals you know for the dialysis they don't need to do so so they can just sit at home and all these all these uh, vehicles are sitting idle in the showroom right no one is buying right now so you know it can be put to good use and it also kind of promotes the brand in a very positive spotlight so you know these are the kind of ideas that we go to brands with because the brands also right now they don't know what to do right and we as their partners it's our job to sort of help them and handhold them through this process 
Yeah, okay. Okay, so we have another interesting question in the chat box actually. Um, you showed us that advertising montage and so can you can we say that it's kind of a plagiarism in advertising because they're using all the same words and thoughts? What would you call it? I would call it lazy ideation because see, no one can stop me from using a word. Okay, so if I say I'm in my brand is in this together, and if another brand says my brand is also in this together, it's not plagiarism. It's just that you know it's lazy ideation because you're saying the same thing. It's it's more that it's repetition. It's repetition more than right. plagiarism. Right. Okay. Uh, Diana has this another question. Do you need to be great in writing to be a copywriter? Or do you just learn along the process? I think it's something that you learn because we're crafting for advertise. Advertising writing is very different from normal writing. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So because there is a certain limitation on the words that you use, the kind of things that you need to say. So a lot of it, you'll be guided by your seniors in the agency. And for the first one year of your career, you're, you're only learning. You're only and only learning. So even if you're not a great writer, Diana, it's okay because you know if you're a great ideator that makes up for it like like you saw all the work i showed you right people don't really make print ads anymore so writing per se doesn't matter if you have great ideas if you can think of apps that are not ads uh, if you can think of a great tv commercial right so you don't really have to be great at writing for that it's perfectly okay so what do agencies look for when they hire copywriters if it's not writing hard work hard work and a willingness to fail Okay, so I'll tell you what, on an average, if I go to a client with five ideas, five ideas are rejected. And it takes me three rounds for one idea to get approved. And that too in a very filtered down way. So it's a ratio of one is to 15. And I'm just talking about one project. In one go, we work on maybe in one week, I work on probably eight or 10 projects, right? So for maybe every 100 ideas that I'm putting out there, maybe 10 are getting approved. So you have to learn to, you have to just develop a thick skin, right? You need to be willing to put in the hard work, you know, hard work. So because ideas come from within you, right? So when someone says no to it, it's a lot of rejection that's hard to take because you're dealing with it emotionally. There is nothing professional about it. It is very personal. <laughs> People mm -hmm. might tell you otherwise, but it's a very personal thing. So you have to develop a sort of thick skin. You'll be like, okay, even if 10 ideas are rejected, I will go back with 10. Right, I will go back with 20, I will go back with 30. It's the mentality that comes. That's all that they're looking for. Because the agencies know that when they're hiring you, that you're very raw, right? You're, you're, a, you're, a, you're a piece of coal that will eventually turn into a diamond 10 years down the line. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, moving to the next question. Where do you think graphic communication and copywriting merge? Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, I think I actually have something in the presentation that I have. Can I show you guys like a print ad? Yeah, yeah, sure. Please go ahead. Okay, let me just give me a second. Share screen. Share. Okay, check this. Check this ad out. I just need to move this dialog box out of the way. Can you guys see it? Yeah, yeah, we can. Uh -huh. Okay. So this is a great, I think it's a great example of where graphic communication and writing, so to speak, come into play. I'll give you a bit of a background. So, you know, there are so many KFC imitators, right? Fried chicken is like spread like mad. Yeah, there's like ABC. So KFC sort of picked up on this thing. More than KFC, an ad and a graphic communicator somewhere and a copywriter got together and thought, you know, this, this will make for a hilarious ad. So if you I... think about it, copywriting is essentially, it is the last piece to where KFC takes a very leader sort of position and it says, Are, mm -hmm. we are flattered. So the graphic design is actually finding and, you know, placing A to Z. If you think it's A, B, C, D, they found every single example of a KFC imitator, right? So that's, that's, that's probably a cool example of, you know, graphic communication and writing coming together versus versus the first ad which was just you know one large image this is one this is my favorite print ad by the way and it just has that one line at the bottom this is very traditional and very old school and advertising obviously doesn't work that way anymore yeah. i like that question nice one then okay so 
we have another question for you um should we approach for different ideation techniques for different platforms what do you think yeah, absolutely absolutely and do we have the time i can we have the liberty to show one more one more piece of work yeah yeah please go ahead all i can talk about it you know so essentially when the samsung galaxy note 10 just released a few months ago right mm -hmm. uh, the 5g version So instead of creating an ad, what Samsung ended up doing was something like this. Uh, and God, I have it. I had a hunch that I would find an opportunity to show this ad, so I made a screen recording. I need you to look after this case for the day. It's very important. You click on that, and it takes you to a different page. Okay. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Time to head to work. so you know this is basically what they did on the social i mean you can always go to samsung uk and you know have play this game right it's right at the first highlight over there but okay. essentially this is where i say we are ideation for different platforms right on instagram this is how you this is a great way to promote a new product launch because instagram is very fast it's very interactive you know it's very story based okay versus you know showing a tv commercial like samsung has also created a tv commercial for this phone but that's only for tv okay but for a platform like instagram they created something very interactive like this so yeah okay okay uh so another question is how can we prepare our content around this pandemic for example a restaurant that's reopening okay that, that's interesting um uh, think about what your restaurant stands for okay uh, one of the major themes that people use for the tourism or the restaurant business is a strong sense of community um for example if your restaurant has been around in that area for a very long time we could draw upon a sense of solidarity right so those are the key things because right now emotions will work better than anything else so maybe you could give that a shot okay um we have another question for you and this menti is from zevias too and they're working as a copywriter in the cosmetic industry which has taken a major hit during the pandemic so how do you clear warehouse when the people don't wear a full face makeup considering the times how do you clear the warehouse i have no idea i am i don't understand the question to be very honest okay okay i repeat the question uh, so this person is work, working as a copywriter in a cosmetic industry which has taken a hit during the pandemic Right. now how do you clear the warehouse when people don't wear a full face makeup given the times oh right okay so i okay that's interesting or you basically you stay silent or you right where you do basic communication or you do fun stuff like right now we're all on zoom right and just because you're at home that doesn't mean that you don't sort of look good for a zoom call or a work call so maybe you do something around that you know about different you know not work from home but make up from home routines you know because people have to do it themselves now so mm -hmm. maybe you do tutorials about how to do make up at home there are very different things yeah That's, but right. it has to be centered around the fact that you take on the problem that you know people are not going out no make up and you try countering that with things that people can do at home that's essentially the mm -hmm. way okay that that is interesting um we got the next question Do you guys only write the copy or design the content of the ad too? Being a copywriter, so we work in teams. I am. I am a writer. I have an art partner. Okay, so my art okay. partner. We work together. We work in tandem. We come up with an idea, mm -hmm. and I essentially I I will write the text or the copy for it, and my art guy will try and interpret it in the best way and think of great visuals to sort of go along with it. So that's how our roles are divided. Okay. Okay, and. 
how do you suggest we can learn more copywriting apart from taking paid courses this is the next question in turn just in turn like i said you advertising is not something that you learn in a college sitting in a classroom right. it's something you learn on the job like mm -hmm. journalism or like i don't know any other any other you know work intensive profession like that just go find an ad agency give them a call tell them i want to intern it's really that simple that it's not very formal there's no like cv if you have a folio great but it's not very formal like other places just like give them a call say you know i want to intern i have a working internet connection i have a laptop and i have a hunger to learn that's kind of what it that's all it takes okay so what should your resume have if you are applying for the ah, job right. that's a good one so uh, what you could do is that if you do have an aptitude or a liking for advertising try creating your own ads you know a basic photoshop or even powerpoint i remember uh, before applying for my first job uh, i was asked to give a test i was asked to write a copy test and one of those was creating a set of ads and obviously i didn't know photoshop so in P in, in, in a ppt i created ads you know and uh, that's how I, i made it so just create a lot of work you know because they're not looking for accuracy they're not looking for a great ad they know that you know nothing so they're just looking for you know like some spark some idea of creativity that's about it okay okay so if we're talking about books for example so how can you make that more attractive to the audience a depends what your book is about to be very honest okay um, it depends on your advertising it okay okay for example if your book is a crime thriller you could maybe create like a fun interactive mini series on instagram for it okay where like you know you use you like like that interactive game that you saw for samsung similarly you could create like an interactive crime thriller series on instagram where every saturday or every you know every week or every two days there is something that happens you know the author interacts with different people people are invited to crowd source ideas to create a crime a small crime story on the spot mm -hmm. with a great twist you know i mean it depends it honestly depends on what your book is about right okay okay so how do we know that this is the limit of our ideation like how do you know that that's it you cannot do more there is no limit there is no limit you do it until you start crying and you don't want to think of any more ideas that's why you basic stuff <laughs> jokes aside uh, so when you have a great idea you know you have a great idea okay my rule of thumb is to go to a client so if i'm very confident about an idea i will go with just one more idea but if i think that you know the client uh, is not very sure himself i'm not sure what the client wants then i'll just go with two or three different things okay so if he doesn't like this then i will give him this if he doesn't like that i will give him that it's a gut instinct and it's all about what your client wants at the end of the day right uh, like the guys who created the volvo ad right um, they would have probably thought about it kushal um are you there I think there is some internet issues. Guys, just just give it a minute or two. I think he'll be back. Till then, if you guys have any questions, please do drop the questions in the Q and A box. And don't you guys worry. I if you miss the uh, miss the session, we are going to share the recordings with you in the groups, and we are going to email the recordings as well. Meanwhile, let's wait for Kushal to come back. Okay, guys. Kushal is going to be back in a minute. If you have any questions, do them in the box. I think we'll share the recording by the end of this week, and you'll receive an email with the recording tomorrow. So yeah.
check out your inbox. Um, Divya, can you please repeat your question? I think. Okay, guys, I'm really sorry. I dropped off for a second. Some internet issue, but I'm back and. Yeah, um, okay, so mo let's move to the next question. Um, can having copywriting skills help digital marketers in their career? Sorry, could you repeat that? Yeah, yeah. Do you think co having copywriting skills help digital marketers in their career? Digital marketers? Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a great tradition. It's not the biggest thing. It's definitely not the biggest thing, but you think of it from this point of view, right? What is the biggest thing that you need to be a digital marketer? And maybe that would be a better way to approach it. Okay. Okay. So if we are starting new, then what is the best way we can advertise? Like, uh, what do you want to advertise? It depends. <laughs> what do you suggest is the best way of starting up in this industry? Uh, working at an agency, that's the greatest way. And uh, like I mentioned, you can always intern and agencies are very willing to take on new joinees as interns. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And how, how difficult is it to convince your client of the idea that you have in mind? Oh, it's or very difficult. It is so difficult. It's right? so the worst thing. It's the toughest thing to do because <laughs> you have a great idea, but an unwilling client, that's, that's like the worst. Um, so we do, right. we do a lot of different things, right? We always try mm -hmm. to be on the brief. That, that's the, that's like the one biggest thing. Cause see, at the end of the day, you have to understand mm -hmm. that a client is the one putting the money, right? He has the most to lose. Mm -hmm. It's very natural for them to be reluctant or not know because they are marketers. Their job is not what our job is, right? Our job should think of cool ideas that internally we know will work but they don't have any idea of knowing it will work. So one, it is a function of, you know, building a certain trust. If you have a new client mm -hmm. and the first meeting you propose a, a revolutionary idea, he's not going to buy it, but you know, give it six months, give it eight months, let him trust you, let him trust your work and he will. Okay. Okay. So um, that's about the questions, I guess. Uh, so, Thank you so much for the answers, Prashar. I'm pretty sure MNDs found uh, very insightful. And before we wrap this up, could you suggest a few movies or books or YouTube channels that can help in, you know, ideation or perhaps in advertising in general? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So uh, more than books or movies, I'm going to tell you one thing. So on YouTube, search for can winning ideas, right? Cans lions. It's, it's spelled C A W N E S. So look for cans, lions, and you know, all through the years, you'll find those are advertising archives, the best of the best work. Mm -hmm. And it's available on the internet. So when you watch a lot of it, you'll get a great idea of, you know, like the kind of work that is winning. Because the cans is like the Oscars of advertising, right? Only the best right. work wins. So it'll tell you exactly where you stand when it comes to ideas. That's one. And number two, it's a great exercise for rewriting, you know, so think backwards when you watch a case study, right, of how this ad won. So like the Bajaj, we think that I showed you guys, that's a case study of it had a problem statement and it had a solution to it. The problem statement being that we are launching a new bike and what can we leverage to sort of do that, right? That was one way. So always rewrite, think and don't get carried away by how good the ad was. Yes, that's the first thing. But think about how that process came about, right? How did this person think of this? What is a problem that they were trying to solve? What is a business problem? Okay. And that will actually help you develop a more analytical way of, uh, of approaching or creating something new. 
Okay. And um, our mentees would love to connect with you, Kushal. Is there like any way they can, uh, an email address or LinkedIn profile? Instagram, perhaps? guys. Instagram, Instagram. Instagram. Wait, I'm on Instagram wait. as Lal Vanity. Uh, you guys know my name, right? Uh, my last name, Kushal Lalwani, with a B, just add a Y to it, Lal Vanity. Hit me up there. You can always, um, you know, find me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to answer your questions over there. Whatever works, honestly. Okay, great, great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kushal, for giving us your time. It was Absolutely. an amazing session. And thank you all to all of you for attending it. I, I hope you loved attending the session as much as we loved organizing it. And thanks a lot for being here. Okay, yeah, and one, one last thing, I'd just can... like to add, yeah. I'd like to add one last thing. Uh, I'm sure. sure a lot of you would also want the source of this stuff. So I'm going to send it across uh, to Sid and then maybe, you know, you guys can watch this presentation later. Yeah. The pieces of work in it. Yeah. Great. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much, Kashul. Thank, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye. Have a Bye, guys. Thank you so much.